Hello and welcome to our third Sunday at Three Organ Concert Series. Glad to have you with us today. Performing on today's program are a number of our Loyalist students who study organ privately with me here at the chapel. Some that are playing today for their first time and even some that are playing for us today from where they've been studying at all semester in their home in another state that is not here in Chicago, Illinois. So we're grateful to all of our students who've gone above and beyond this past semester of COVID time to both learn the organ, to practice hard, and to perform extremely well. I'm very proud of them. So thank you for being with us. I hope you enjoyed today's program and you'll hear some of our other performers as we go through the program today. Thank you. Well, Charles, it's great to have you with us for our series here. Um, you are a first year student studying here at Loyola. It's also your first time playing on the series. And this is a first for all of us. Uh, you've been studying virtually together for the past semester and you're performing with us, but from your uh, hometown there in Ohio. So thank you for being open to this new experience. Great to have you with us. Why don't we start off and for everyone listening, have you tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Betancourt. So I've enjoyed my time here very much for the last few months. Um, I'm learning a lot. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. I went to a Catholic high school, St. Ignatius in Cleveland. And I began learning the organ 
the, in the latter half of my sophomore year. And then I started getting serious about it my junior year. Um, I had weekly lessons. I began playing at a local church um, my senior year. Um, and I feel like my progress is becoming a lot faster here. So I'm really enjoying it so far. That's awesome. Well, it's been, it's been really great to teach you. Uh, you can tell each week you're practicing diligently, which I very much appreciate. So today's piece is box Prelude and Fugue in F major from the Eight Little Collection. Why don't you tell us uh, some things that we can be listening for as we hear you play this piece? Yeah, thank you. So what's interesting about this fugue in particular is its uh, ornamented subject. So you'll see it that as it exchanges through the voices from the highest soprano to the lowest bass, um, you can hear it's distinct in that you always have that ornamentation that doesn't occur in any of the other voices. Um, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect being is that you have that ornamentation in the pedal line. And since it's descending, it may get muddier as it goes down, but I think it really enriches the baseline of the piece, especially towards the end. So I'd listen for those things. Cool. Well, like I said, it's great to, to have you here. I can't wait till the day when we can meet and uh, do our lessons in performing the Madonna, but that day will come. And I uh, just want to thank you for being open to this experience. And now, without further ado, let's hear you play box Prelude and Fugue in F major from the A Little. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, thank you, Charles. That was excellent playing of that piece by Bach. Today, we have a special treat. We have Mia Jamona here, who's a student from the Department of Fine and Performing Arts. Mia, it's really great to have you with us here today. Uh, if we could start off just by telling those of us who are watching our concert uh, today a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a senior voice performance major at Loyola. Um, my teacher is Sarah Ponder. Um, and I thought it would be a really fun idea to sing for this concert series. My friend Danny suggested the idea to me and I was super excited to get back on campus and um, be able to sing in Madonna della Strada again. Awesome, yeah, for those um, who are watching, uh, a lot of people don't get to see Danny all the time, but he's our live stream operator since we've started live streaming in July. And he's also a great uh, advocate for all of his fellow students. So thanks to Danny and thanks for mentioning him. So your first piece we're gonna to hear today is Mozart's Laudate Dominum. I thought it'd be great for you to share with the audience listening today, uh, what your favorite part of the piece is. Um, I actually sang this piece two years ago for the um, Concerto Aria competition at Loyola. Um, I think the piece is really simple and beautiful, but I think Mozart did a great job of setting the text to such a simple um, accompaniment because it really lets the text shine through and the message is really clear. Um, I also think it's sort of innocent and childlike, and I think that's one of the most fun parts about singing that piece. Yeah, and uh, you know, for this piece, we we did the filming from downstairs where the listener would normally be sitting, which is a little bit of a change in our normal procedure. So I'm really glad people will get to experience both the sound of the organ, but the sound of your beautiful voice uh, developing through the wonderful acoustic of our chapel. So without further ado, let's hear Mia singing Mozart's La Date Dominum.
Well, good afternoon, Travis. It's great to have you with us for the first time on our series. Thank you so much. So for everyone that's uh, watching the concert today, why don't we start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Travis Crow. I am a Jesuit scholastic, first year, just moved here from Grand Coteau, Louisiana. Love being in Chicago. Uh, 26, joined the Jesuits two years ago. Um, a convert to the Catholic Church from uh, a strand of Lutheranism. And uh, yeah, just sort of Midwestern all the way. Grew up in Detroit, lived in Utah. Uh, my parents live in Iowa today. And it's great to be here in Chicago. I'm really looking forward to it. That's cool. Well, it's been a lot of fun teaching you this first semester. Uh, can't wait for people to hear you in, in the years to come. But today you're playing this piece by Pachelbel. It's a choral partita. And uh, why don't you tell us a, a couple things that the listener can listen to or uh, observe while they're hearing this piece? Sure. Yeah. So I really enjoyed sort of learning it. Um, the the opening is a good German chorale, uh, a, a nod to my Lutheran roots. Uh, you know, very strong sort of foundation. But if uh, the listener is uh, familiar with uh, J "Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring" by Pachelbel, that the similar themes will sort of pop up in and around uh, the whole piece. Uh, I hope. My, you enjoy my registration from both a, a loud sort of triumphant uh, chorale to something more fun and light uh, to sort of finish on uh, once again that, that, that loud uh, Lutheran uh, organ playing that I probably have developed uh, throughout my life. So I really enjoyed learning it and look forward to sharing it with all of you today. Awesome. Well, we look forward to listening to. So let's get to it and have a listen at this Pachelbel chorale partita. Thank you.
All right, thank you so much, Travis. Excellent playing. It's great to hear the Pachelbel on this program today. We want to welcome back Mia, uh, who will be singing uh, different work today on our program. Mia, why don't you tell us a little bit about this handle and some of the um, wonderful musical challenges involved with it? Yeah, so um, Handel composed this piece for Queen Anne's birthday. I think it was around her 48th birthday. Um, they don't know if it was actually performed at that time, which is kind of sad because it's so beautiful. But apparently she wasn't a big fan of music in general. So um, Handel just kind of had to do it. Um, I think it's really stunning. It's an English. Um, it's such a beautiful melody that I think everyone who listens to it is kind of sucked to it. and. Um, uh, it was performed at the most recent royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, fun, fun fact. Um, this piece is sort of hard to sing because it was originally written for an alto and um, the score we used, we actually transposed, um, I transposed it um, for soprano. Uh, it stays quite high the whole time and it's a little bit tiring to sing because you're holding these long notes and these octave leaps that you really hope you're in tune for because the trumpet's gonna play right after you. And if your note doesn't match the trumpet's note, we know who's wrong basically. So um, that's kind of a challenge, but it's so beautiful uh, to sing. And I'm really glad that we could do it. it I have to tell you, it was really awesome um, to, to be able to do this in the chapel and hearing Jack's trumpet soar along with your your voice was just glorious. And, and again, too, it is a, a favorite choice of weddings for for people with uh, what we would say exquisite taste. So my brother-in-law and new sister-in-law had it for their wedding, uh, which they just celebrated their anniversary this past April. So it is a glorious piece of music and I'm so excited that we can share it with those of us who are listening. So let's get to the handle. Thank you so much Mia for being with us today as well. Thanks.
Well, thank you, Mia and Jack. That was uh, excellent to hear that handle, a special treat for us today. And finally on our program, closing us out is Laura Botte playing Bach's Prelude in Fugue in G major. Laura, can you tell us a little bit about this piece we're about to hear? Yeah, so um, it is, you know, one of Preludes and Fugues, one of some of Bach's most prolific organ works. Um, and this one, it just has like a very like, quite like happy, like fanfare kind of majestic feel to it. Um, and one aspect that I particularly like, it it's kind of like a rhythmic motive in both the prelude and the fugue. And it's like, sometimes it's in the pedal. So sometimes it's an actual pedal point and sometimes it's sort of imitating it in the hands. Um, and if anyone's out there listening and it's like, what's a pedal point? Um, that is just like kind of either re a repeated or a held like note in the bass um, named actually because of organ, um, because of the pedals, if you just hold the pedal down. Um, so there's the rhythmic motive that goes like da, 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 da. And you see that a lot in the prelude, but then it also kind of comes back in the fugue. It's a little bit more difficult to hear in the fugue, but it is there if you listen for it. Um, that particular rhythmic motive um, that sort of functions as a pedal point in several different times. So yeah, I really enjoy that part of the piece. Sweet. I think um, it adds a lot of drama too, I, I'd say in the playing. And then this work of Bach is one of my favorite next to the C minor um, theme and variations or Passacaglia that you play as well. So you're hitting all the biggies this year in your final year of study. And uh, I'm excited for everyone today to hear this special treat of Box Prelude and Fugue in G Major. So thank you, Laura. Thank you for playing today. And thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon uh, for today's concert. And I hope you enjoy this next piece, Box G Major Prelude and Fugue.